Hi everyone, I hope you are having a great day. If you are new here, my name is Lita and on my channel I like to talk about all things involving journals, sketchbooks, and stationery. Today we're going to get right into it. What we're going to do is what I've been putting off my July flip through of my B6 Stalogy. This is the last month I had for this book. So let's get into it. My theme was inspired from the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. Um, I can put a link down below or a card up above uh, for my setup for this. I am so proud of myself because I, I don't even remember the last time I did this, but I actually continued my theme all the way through to the end of the month and enjoyed it. Um, so if you don't know, it'll say in the other video, the Metropolitan Museum of Art had a logo that was a square that was like the Vitruvian Man from Da Vinci and in the middle it had an M for the Met. That was, uh, I don't know, maybe they stopped that around 2016. And this is the new Mets logo with a font. And uh, so I always do a calendar and I had my little art for my cover page. I did my um, appointments and affirmations, which is something that I had been doing through the whole year because it worked for me. And so I continued to do it and it continued to work, but I changed that a bit in July for One Book July. Um, I changed that. My Carpe Diem is what other people call a brain dump page, but I've never been fond of brain dump, although I, I, the words are accurate. You have stuff in your brain, you need to get it out. Seize the day. I used to call this my hustle, and hustle didn't mean like a, to pull one over on someone or to try to do many things at once. It just meant, you know, go for what you want, girl. Go get, go get it. Go get it. Get what you want. You know, do all your things. Go live your best life whatever it is that everyone is saying nowadays <laughs> whatever the current expression is apply it to this and then fair because i was just reflecting back on my trip to france and that's what i was using so i studied french when i was very young and so i've always liked france and wanted to go and anyway i'm just being you know um sentimental and I wrote fair there. But anyway, this is like things to do or get or buy stuff in general. This is what I would call my rolling. Some people um, use an Alastair method. Um, I've talked about a plant-based bride, Elizabeth Turn. She has something called the Rolling Weekly. I often refer to that whenever I do this and explain to people that's where it came from. But um, so it doesn't look like the Alastair, but basically it's a rolling monthly similar to Alastair. I just am super basic and minimal about it. I just have a list and I usually keep it here on my Hustle Carpe Diem brain dump page. And as the month goes along, I add things and I mark them off. But for me, all it means is these are things that I, I would like to get done, that I'm interested in getting done, but they don't need to get done at any specific time. Matter of fact, they may not even need to get done. They just may, maybe I want to get them done, which if you don't know the difference between want and need, yeah, learn about that. Age teaches you. <laughs> Meal planning. Um, this was a I think I did I start this this month this was a method for tracking things that what I did is I had it kind of like daily then weekly then bi-weekly and then some monthly and then some social media stuff and it was very kind of core basic things for, um, this tracking and then of course I had the day day and date down here and I would mark it off if I was involved with that task like Washing my car, you may think this is horrible, but I only consider it that to be something that needs to be done once a month. And more particularly, um, I'm more particular about the inside and keeping that maintained on a regular basis. Like I'm always taking out trash or um, I may wipe the seats down if it needs it, but you know, the outside of the car to me is like a once a month thing. The lawn is something that uh, I think that's like bi-weekly. So it, you get the idea, it's like, you know, it goes from one way to the other and I kind of liked it. Um, it's not very attractive, but it's functional and it works and that's good. And this is what I always say about this bullet journal and the Stalogy, why I love, oh, I'm in a B6 Stalogy, did I say that? Yes. So um, what I love about it is I love how it's blank. Um, if you're a person who doesn't journal every day, then you don't have to worry about having a bunch of blank pages and then feeling like, hey, uh, I missed some days. Now it's like my journal's ruined. Now I can't use it. It's like, and also it's like if something works, 
then the next month you can put it back in. Um, if it doesn't, you don't you you don't have to put it back in. If you want to try something new, and also it's like I can be I can be artsy. Well, for me this is artsy. <laughs> this is actually from one of the booklets at the Met. One of the ones when you walk in, you can be artsy. You can put your little tape. You can decorate how you like. You can change your colors and you can miss pages you can skip pages you can do however you want so i'm a little bit minimalist here going for a little bit of artsy and colorful here and you can mix it up i have a little bit of minimalism this may not seem minimal to you but to me it is there's not a bunch of art and stuff going on around it this is my garden my gardening projects and um yeah the gardening projects are coming along that freaking butterfly garden and my window project are dragging on but I keep telling my mom this is why we write down and we make little lists because that way I can feel I break down this super huge large task and we break it down into little goals so we can feel like yes we're making progress I gotta take a sip of my mate cocido that's a Paraguayan tea I don't know what other countries in South America drink mate cocido but if you like caffeine check it out m-a-t-e Cocido is in Spanish, it means cooked, um, cooked tea. Then this is my weekly, and I have been doing this this way, this type of layout, like this, horizontal, for ever in a day, because that's how I like it. I experimented, believe me, with lots of different ways, and that's the one that works for me. So look, you see, I like, I did it. You're like, somebody, give me a star <laughs> in the comments below. Good job, Lita. <laughs> Um, I did some memory keeping like this whole month so you see it's the Metropolitan but it's also that um, I'm kind of I miss New York City I miss it I'm not gonna lie I miss it New York City to North Central Florida very big difference folks let me tell you so um, yeah so this was actually Fire Island that I had gone out to with my partner and I'm very minimal doing some little bullet lists here and see, it's okay to have blank spaces. This actually comes out from, I had this little book from the Frick Collection. Do I have it? Oh, let's see. Yes, I can reach it. Ah, oh, stretch, Lita, you can do it. Yes, here, the Frick Collection. I went there and I was doing a drop-in sketching one night and they had this in the gift shop and it has these little um, images like in the corner and stuff and I will tear them out and glue them in sometimes so sometimes you like this was something super duper duper cheap I don't remember how much it was but I know it was I got it for super cheap and it was a planner um but it was did I get it I got it this year so it was already old it was 2019 it, was, it must have been 2019 when I got it but it was like in the middle or the end of the year it was in the middle of the year I'm sure and I'd gone there and I saw this for sale so I grabbed it because when I saw the pictures in it I knew I could grab those and glue those down in my book. So this is like typical of something like a subway scene, what you would see um, either in person, somebody playing music, or they do art in the walls on the subways like that. Ooh, this next page, happy mail. So there's memory keeping that happens in here. This is just um, inks and stuff and things that I bought from Yoseka Stationery. They're in Queens in New York City. I love them. Um, I'm glad that they're thriving and doing well during these uncommon times. And this little note that they gave me, so I just, I did this on this page. I did a, a unboxing of this. My unboxing is usually like this, very chatty, but I'll put a card to the unboxing from Yoseka. I think I have also somewhere a little video where it actually shows you a clip of this tiny little store. It is such heaven. If you love stationery, if you love, um, all things stationary, whether it's journals, pens, inks, washi tapes. I mean, just it's this tiny store, but it is heaven. It is heaven on earth. I love that place. So look, you see, I kept up with my little theme. I had fun. Look, see here, I didn't do much. This is what I'm saying. It's like great. It's like if you're just not having a day where you fill out the whole it's okay i just can start the next day right there on that same page the weekend i was obviously something was happening because my thing here says to breathe so <laughs> it must have been a rough one let me cover it up only goodness knows what it says in there um but yeah 
memory keeping going on. There's a lot of writing going on in here, continuing the weekly spreads. And here comes my writing marathon. I'm so proud of myself for keeping up with the theme. Lots of, see, here's more of my little, this came out from this one as well. And this, um, these are just washies. Often when I drink mate cocido, I'll put one of these washies in there. This is a washi tape. I have it here, don't I? Yes, I do. In my plethora of washi tapes. Yeah, it's this one. I love this. Where did I get this from? I got it from Pinkoy. That's, I'm pretty sure. Did I get it from there? Or did I get it from Art Atelier? I don't know, but it's so wide. You see that? And it has these little like ink splatter splatches, or maybe they're coffee splatches, which makes more sense because this is coffee themed. So, um, yeah. Oh, and here, this is just memory keeping. There's not a day when I lived in, okay, there's not a time when I lived in New York City that I did not, um, when I did, um, okay, I learned to speak. Maybe I need more mate. Here we go. This is um, Grand Central Station. This is the ceiling in there. And whenever I go through Grand St Central Station, it doesn't matter how long you've lived in New York City. For me, it doesn't matter how long I lived in New York City. I always was in wonder and amazement of all the ar um, architectural beauty of the buildings. So I took this picture at some point when I was there because I often did do that. Um, so I just thought, I don't know, I felt like writing about, or I just felt like that. That's what I felt like and so I did. This is a picture that my partner had actually sent me that month that there was a rainbow, but the little printer, my little HP sprocket, this it's like the color, it's, it's always wants to go a little bit towards the rosy red. So, you know, this is not the highest quality printer and I'm okay with it because I just enjoy that it prints out pictures once in a while that fit nicely into my B6 Stalogy. And um, here's some more. Um, this must have, I don't know if this was a separate, um, I don't know if this was a separate or if this is from the same order of Yoseka. I'm going to say it was separate because they seem kind of far apart. Hmm. This says June, yeah, they must have been two different orders. So I must order it again from Yoseka. And I have, this is like the little personal note they send you. And I had bought, yeah, I bought this stamp. That was nice. I enjoyed that. This is, and I've been using since then, I've been using um, other stamps that I got that were in that set, in that collection. I'm not sure where that stamp is. It must be in here. Oh, maybe it's behind me. Anyway, there's a video about this unboxing, I'm sure, in my um, library. So anyway, so I just did some little memory keeping. Oh, and I started playing around even more. See, I still kept with it though. I still was doing like the little Vitruvian man with the letter to start the day. Oh my gosh. Thank you all. Anybody who is my subscriber. Look, I'm just, this is my hobby. <laughs> I just like making these little videos, but I hit a hundred subscribers on this day. So all 100 of you, thank you. That, that meant something to me. <laughs> It did. It made me happy. This is a, something I do for fun. Okay, see, look, here's a totally blank page, and it's okay. I thought about it earlier, and I was like, oh, this is awesome that there's a blank page. I'm going to come in here and sketch and practice drawing some sunflowers. When there's blank pages in old books, I was like, why did I put this book away? I need to leave this out. It has some blank pages. I don't feel compelled to have to fill in this blank page, but at the same time, it's like, it gives me opportunities for later on. If I want to do something like a pen test, I could just like pen test on this page. Like, how is this blue compared to this blue? Because you see, they're both so similar, right? And I could be like, okay, okay, no, this is the one I want. This is the one that's more transparent. I need this one. Sometimes I'll just take these pages and I'll use them for something as simple as that. Or if I want to swatch something out like an ink or test something like an ink, or if I want to draw and be more artistic, I can use that as later on a page that I can fill in if I want to, but I don't feel compelled or need to. So here's the Chrysler building. Is that the, yes, Empire building, Chrysler building. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so here there's just gonna be a lot of writing, but I continued my little theme, Juneteenth. This is when, oh my gosh, this page was, so much fun. I'm going to cover this up because I have no idea what I wrote over there, but here's more of that. Oh, and I was having so much fun with this stamp. I love this stamp. I've been using this a lot. 
my stepfather passed away and I found this in his desk with his stationary stuff and it was never even opened. It was in packaging. And so I've been using it and I like it because just like right now, the minute when I grab it, it reminds me of my stepdad and he was a really good person. He was a good man. He was a, he was a veteran. Um, you know, he was just, he was a good person. He was good to my mom. So, um, Juneteenth, I got a, this is when I got my Goulet pens, my blue splotch, first time I ever ordered from them. And I had ordered, and I'm so glad that I did, I had ordered Apache Sunset, that's a Noodler's ink, and it got all over my hands. And I'm like, I can't, I can't waste this deliciousness. <laughs> and I just started like a five-year-old finger painting on my page. And this, there's definitely my first Goulet pens. Again, there's like a video from unboxing of that. And it's also chatty, terrible like this. My gosh, so excited. I got my bicycle. See, June was hard, but it had a lot of goodness in it. Still, this is also from the Frick Collection book. I actually used the lines that were in on that page and just wrote over it. Um, cathartic writing. Yes, writing is cathartic. More mem This is actually from my trip to France with Anne-Marie. This is a happy memory. This is... <laughs> She has this terrible look on her face. I'm, as you can probably hear from my voice, I'm a bit bubbly and joyous. I tend to lean towards the positive. Um, when there's things that are uncomfortable, I lean into it and try to go with it. I don't hold on to, uh, I don't hold on to bad things. Amory is, look, she's the adulting person in the relationship. And somehow she's always having to put up with my foolish nonsense. But I think it's that uh, very big difference between our personalities that made us really great together. So here we're in the Louvre where I've been dragging her around all day. And I found um, a caf cafeteria. It's not a cafeteria. It was a restaurant in there. And I don't remember what I was so excited about. Um, Angelina, I think it was Angelina was the name of it. And um, we were going to go and eat in there, but she has this look on her face, which it wasn't really how she felt. She did that to be comical, but she was like, oh my gosh, here she goes again, making me pose for her pictures. Um, lots of writing, some checklists. I ended up getting that bicycle. Did I show you that bicycle? I was so happy about the bicycle. Um, See, look here, this is something I just found going through papers. This is, I have, I have a few, quite a few of these, not a lot, but a few of these that they're the stubs from when you go into the Met. So yeah, it's really great. When you live in New York, you can go to all these different, there's so many different museums you can go to and you don't have to pay the fee. Like when you're a tourist, I could go into the Met and say, I'd like to um, contribute $5 today. And I could just go in, or I could say, I, I'd like to contribute $2 today. And I just can go in and I can spend the whole day there for $2 one of the privileges of being a New Yorker. Um, so this is the end of June. It's, I said goodbye June and I wrote overall a V-E-R-V-E-R-Y rough month. <laughs> it was a very rough month but in spite of whatever roughness happened in that month I also managed to write down in my reflections some positive things that were June. First thing got my new bike. Well new for me. I got it like it's beautiful. I love this bike. Uh, everybody in the world has decided that bicycling is the thing that they should be doing because of social distancing and all of the uncommon things going on in this time. And so it was very hard to find a bike, but I found a gorgeous bike. I only had to drive four and a half hours away and four hours back. I know why is it? Actually, four, it was more like three and a half hours away and four and a half hours back. <laughs> it was fast to go down, slow to come back. Um, to get that bike, I went so far, but it was worth it and I am using it. So go me. Um, I made forward progress on my gardening, uh, made lots of progress with my mother and the things that she needs to do medically to be well. And then I made all these plans, uh, forward progress plans. And yeah, and that was it. That was it. I wrote a few little notes and that was it. And I said goodbye to June. And I have pages left back here. And it's not enough for me to have done another month. And I was planning to go to the half year 
A5 Stalogy, but I love that I have extra pages here because I, I like this paper and for me it won't go wasted. I can either pull them out and use them as scraps um, or pull them out to write notes and tip in or I can draw on them, but they're not they're not wasted pages. They'll still, you know, be able to get used. So that is it. That's my very chatty flip through. That is the end of my B6. I loved this B6. It's all it's all like this because I always kept it inside a Chic Sparrow folio. I had a waypoint folio that it was in all month. I had a pocket that was here in the front and I moved it out and put it into my A5 that I'm using now. So that's the end of July. And with that, I will bid you all well wherever this meets you at, morning, noon, or night. Take care. Bye.